Hey, what's up everybody? Fuller here. Thanks so much for checking out the channel. Today we're going to be talking about what I think is the most absolute important node inside Metasounds when it comes to creating music, creating generative music, arranging music, um, all sorts of things when it comes to putting together audio that needs to be perfectly synced, perfectly in time. I think there's one node that rules them all, and I think it's the heart and soul of any really complex musical uh, interactive system that you're going to build inside of the Unreal Engine using Metasounds, and that node is the trigger repeat node. I will repeat it. Trigger repeat trigger repeat. That's exactly what a trigger repeat does. It repeats triggers over and over and over. And it may sound kind of why, why is that the most important node? And the reason is because music is time-based. It's, it's all about when stuff happens. It's it, when stuff happens is what makes music arranging possible. And then of course, at what volume it happens. So between triggering things, I just hit my chimes, between triggering things and manipulating levels, you can build extremely complicated music systems, as long as the composer, you know, composed them well. Um, and we'll maybe talk about that in future videos, but the trigger repeat node is the most important node for the composer that is technically designing uh, music and arranging and stuff like that. So, or maybe maybe just kind of understanding the concept will help you. If you're a game, a music composer, it'll help you kind of understand ways to compose music which works better in games. And if you're new to technical sound design, it's it's the really the node that unlocks the doors and allows you to do a lot of great things. Time-based, sample accurate, perfect every time. So we're gonna jump in and I'm gonna talk all about the repeat trigger. Typically when you think about uh, game music, you think about looping things, right? Like eight bar phrases looping or 12 bar phrases or three minutes looping because gameplay can take hours. What I try to do is kind of shift my thinking and not think as much as things that are looping, but things that are being re-triggered on musical in increments. What do I mean by that? Well, I just want to show you this meta sound here. This track, for instance, this drums track right here that we have. Uh, when, when I play this, you'll hear it. You'll hear it playing. A lot of us might default just to looping that and then at some point leaving that loop. But I wanna submit to you a, a more efficient way maybe of doing that and that's with the trigger repeat. So what I've built here is just a basic meta sound that uh, for the sake of demonstration purposes, we're going to we have one drum track, the track that I just played for you, and then we have this ending here, this uh, this riser ending, and it sounds like this. Okay, so that's a, a two bar musical phrase with a one bar kind of silent uh, fade out at the end. So it's kind of three bars of music. So what I wanna do is I want to uh, set this up in a way where this drum track is going to not loop, it's gonna sound like it's looping, but it's not technically looping. What it's doing is we are re-triggering it frame accurately um, exactly when it's over. And by doing this, what we're able to do is we're able to set up logic inside the meta sound uh, graph that can then do other things. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have this drum, drum loop that's playing over and over and over, but then we're going to trigger that riser ending uh, at any point in the game, or in this place, in, the, in this instance, in the meta sound, and we're gonna trigger that riser musically so that when that riser triggers, as soon as that riser hits, the sound is gonna stop and you're just gonna hear the decay of the riser. So basically what we're doing is we're making an endless musical phrase that then can trigger a musical ending in time at any point based on gameplay. And uh, the reason this is important, even though this is a very simple demonstration, the reason this is important is because this concept can be scaled into an entire music system. And I'll show you that in future videos. If you saw my Halloween video, same concept, uh, the theremin video, it was um, music that was looping and playing and transforming and being re-triggered and then when you grab the pumpkin, it triggered the perfectly timed musical ending. And because we're doing this inside the meta sound, we have so much flexibility because everything is sample accurate, super musical, and you don't have to worry about the game thread uh, me messing any of that up. So 
Let me just show you the power of this trigger repeat. So this is the trigger repeat node. And if you're new to MetaSounds, check out my MetaSounds 101 video. This is the trigger repeat node. So when I hit play, what we're doing is we are triggering this node every one bar at 120 beats per minute. Now I set up the tempo over here, you'll see here. So uh, I created a BPM to seconds and then I sent this to a variable that I named one measure at 120. So here in this BPM node, you'll see I set the division to basically uh, the whole note, which is a, a whole bar and we are counting every bar. So dividing the whole note, one whole note, and this triggers every whole note. So basically at 120 beats per, per minute, we are triggering a trigger at the top of each measure. So what this does is this sets us up inside this meta sound. So you see this triggering every bar. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, why are we doing this? It seems overly complicated. Well, because we're doing it this way, now we can take these perfectly timed triggers and we can start branching off of this and creating all sorts of vast musical arrangements. So the first thing we're doing is we're sending out this trigger repeat to here. And what this is, this uh, little blue comment section here, this is, uh, we're counting the triggers and we are repeating the main wave player, okay? So again, over here is our main drum loop, this meta sound here, or this, this wave player here is our main um, drum sound. Sorry for all the noise, uh, my family's running around like crazy. Um, but uh, we're triggering the drum sound here. But what we're doing is, since this is repeating every bar, we don't necessarily want it to do something every bar. And this is, but we do want that pulse. We want that continuous pulse so that we can do stuff with those triggers if we want to. Because what that gives us the ability to do is make musical decisions every beat or every bar perfectly timed. Now you don't have to set this to the bar. You could set this to the beat. You could set it to a quarter note, eighth note, however you want to do it. So what we're doing is, as this is triggering, the first thing we're doing is we're coming out here and we're setting this trigger control. And then what this is gonna do is, when this triggers in, it goes out, unless we close it, okay? So right now you'll see trigger in, trigger out. Trigger in, trigger out. So this gate, this control is open, it's a gate. We might, we're gonna wanna close it later when we trigger the ending, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. We're triggering out of the control. Then we're coming into the trigger counter. Well, why are we going into a trigger counter? Because we wanna keep track of every time that trigger is triggered. Why? Because we want to recycle the wave. We want to play the wave again. So this drum loop here, again, we're not looping. We're just triggering it. So we're triggering it every four beat, every four bars. So that's what's happening here. We're, we're going in, it's counting, two, three, four, and then the next one, the gates open. So we count the triggers, and what we're doing here, we're going from the, we're going from the gate here, that's always open, to the trigger counter, and then we're comparing the trigger. So we're basically here, we're saying, every time this is triggered, compare the number of triggers we've had, okay? Once it gets to, if it's not four, so the first one is not four, zero, one, two, three is all false. So what happens is if it's false, we trigger this do once node. And what that does is it starts the sound. So watch, boom, there's the trigger. Now it's closed. Because the way a trigger once node works is once you trigger it, it closes until you reopen it. When do you reopen it? After the fourth measure. So when this is true, meaning after we've counted four triggers, we're going to open this trigger once back up. So true resets the trigger once, meaning the next trigger will go through, which happens to be at exactly the end of this. So let's watch it and count it. One, two, it's closed. Three, it's closed. Four, it's closed. Now it's open. Boom, now it starts the loop over. And if you listen close, you'll hear that there's no gap right here, listen. Perfectly frame accurate. So it sounds like the, the drums are looping, but they're not looping, they're being re-triggered. 
This is important because this allows us to re-trigger anything. It allows us to take that out and trigger something else all in perfect musical time. So once we do that, now we also at the same time, we're, tr we're sending this trigger out here. And I'm calling this, this is the begin ending. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's kind of an oxymoron, but you are beginning the end of the song. And what this is, this is an input trigger. Again, we have a trigger once loop here, or we have a trigger once note here, but if you see here, this one starts closed. So this one never passes until this node is triggered. Once I trigger this node, what happens is this trigger comes out here. First thing it does is it goes to this trigger delay that is set to the same BPM as the trigger. And so what this does is we're going to trigger this for we're in one bar, we're gonna trigger it, we're gonna delay it one bar because the riser climaxes on the end of the first bar. So at the top of the second bar is where we want to stop the other track, the drum loop. So what this does is it sends a trigger delay and then it sends this execution variable out, kill sound. Then up here you'll see when that is triggered, kill sound closes this trigger so we can no longer start, we will no longer hear the drum loop playing. It will not trigger that. And then also up here, we kill the sound and it actually stops the wave. Now these happen basically simultaneously. So it closes the gate and stops the drum, which basically makes as soon as that riser is done, one bar after the riser's trigger, it ends the sound. Then you'll hear the tail of the riser, and then which is right here, and then the tail of the riser goes to the unfinished node, and the meta sound is removed from uh, from the uh, memory. So let's just watch how that works. So we're triggering, okay? Now listen close. This this will just play continually until something in the game triggers this action. So I'm gonna simulate this action right near, right here and watch the gate open on the next one. Here we go. See how that works? Let's do that one more time. So we hit play. We're gonna trigger the ending. Both out, riser starts, kill sound stops the drums, and then on finished, kills the meta sound. Um, and so, why is this so cool? Well, this is so cool because when you put it in a game, it times the ending musically. So we've got, you'll hear that riser doesn't trigger until there's a musical quarter note or a musical bar there. So no matter when we trigger this, it's not gonna actually play until the trigger passes. So I'll trigger it right here, but now the gate's open and now the trigger goes through. So that's how we control musical phrases. Now, how does this work in the landscape of a game? Well, here it is. So I have the meta sound in this world and I have this box. When I hit this box, when my player, we're, we're first person now, so you can't see the character, but when the player walks onto that box, you're gonna hear the ending trigger, okay? So we're gonna hit play. We're walking around the game. We're doing stuff. Nothing's happening. And then when I run into this box, you're gonna hear the riser and then you're gonna hear the music stop. Here we go. Done. And so that is a great way to musically arrange and control the flow of information inside the MetaSound. This is what makes MetaSound so powerful. We have all of this built in, and look at it like this. This meta sound is just an empty canvas for you to paint on. And I'm only using one trigger repeat. We can take this concept, we can have this trigger trigger another trigger repeat. So we could come out here and we could do another trigger repeat, except on this one, we could go uh, BPM, we could change this here, we could go BPM here, we could do same tempo 120, but we could go quarter notes now. And so what's gonna happen here is you're gonna see uh, here, let me put, let me attach this to something. Um, so now you'll see this, watch this one. So now this one is actually triggering on its own to quarter notes. 
So there's a lot of you know really cool things that you can do with this concept, but I do believe that uh, getting a firm grasp on the concept of the retreat, the repeat trigger, is critical in understanding all of the uh, things that you can do with music and in, in, in the way triggers work and interact with each other inside the meta sound. And the beauty of this is it's, it's once you start that meta sound, everything that happens inside that meta sound is going to be absolutely perfect perfectly in sync musically, no matter the tempo, no matter the complexity of the music. And so, um, I mean, it might have a bigger memory strain, obviously, if there's a t it'll take longer to compile at the beginning and load, but it, once it's loaded and it's, it's happening, there's so much logic you can do. You can create layers, you can create different arrangements, bridge, course, but you can navigate using cue points, you can navigate it using trigger counters, all this stuff. So there's a lot of really fantastic, powerful things you can do. So I wanted to put that out there. And um, if you haven't messed around with the trigger repeat, I wanna encourage you to do that as you're learning meta sounds. I hope this video was helpful. Please like and subscribe, comment if you would like, and we'll see you in the next video.